Okay. It, I, I took this apart, but you, you got the picture here. Here's your part, and here's your guide bearing. You'll have your other one on the other end. You can take another bearing assembly, and this one here, you would want to lock it down solid with the set screws once you're all in position. And this plate could come over, and you could actually have an Acme thread that would be thrustly mounted to a fixed point, and then have an Acme nut welded in or tacked onto this plate and then you can rotate this uh, like a like a regular lead screw on a mill. One of my own thoughts on an uh, auto feed for a portable boring machine would be to have another variable drive just like on the Bridgeport mills and then you can quickly hand crank it both back and forth um, there again, you know, we're doing a one-off shot uh, on uh, a stern bearing or something in that, that fashion. But if you were to make up a boring bar, you know, you would get into this kind of a thinking. All right, here's looking down and this flat milled area right here is chip relief. Also, it's very handy to do this first and then you can flip it and then you got your hole going 90 degrees uh, to the surface. Um, this one here, instead of doing a brooch uh, straight through to hold the tool bit, I have an insert in there and uh, it's a low carbon uh, round tool bit insert. And what's special about this is on this side of it it has a threaded adjustment nut that you can screw in and out let me put the tool bit in here and you can adjust the tool bit for the cut when you get it set you can lock these two set screws down this flat also makes it very nice to pop the dial indicator on here with the indicator off of the tip of here and then adjust your cut. Here's a, another thing to notice and, and this would be the direction that I would put the, the cutter in here so it would be cutting in this direction but you can see this amount of surface area here and this surface area back here that hole is actually off-centered somewhat so that this is still above center line as far as the revolutions but I've offset it so that it's closer to being center line so your your diameters uh, when you feed this out your diameter of cut is closer uh, than if it was if it was way up on the height besides being the wrong uh, contact on on your your cut itself you would be feeding it in not true you know not as true as you would be if it was uh, uh, coming in center line now here's a uh, slideshow going through and showing you the excavator job I did and you can see uh, it's gonna go through uh, showing all the cracks that were in the thumb uh, section of the excavator which the thing was totally beat and it kind of shows you how people will weld on top of weld, on top of weld, on top of weld, if you believe that or not. Uh, you look into pictures there, and uh, you know, when something starts breaking apart, you got to get in there and you got to get down and cut out all the break. All, excuse me. You got to get. Damn, Pepsi. Um, It'll show you how broken up this thing was. I actually went in and completely cut out both box tube sections of this and well prepped all the finger sections of the thumb itself. And then as it got together, uh, the, the main boom came in, we did the line bore on it, and then it went out. That whole thing, I brought it right in through the glass slider um, with the help of my wife, of course and got it in position it went out and then we brought in the thumb 
and uh, that really is where you start getting some good pictures of the the bits location actually working in there, cuts being made, and uh, you get a little bit more of the the line boring that went on. It's kind of my best uh, uh, photo session that I have of such a thing right now. So enjoy. We'll catch you after that. shed some light on uh, being able to set up a, your own boring uh, uh, system there. There's uh, a couple things you want to keep in mind. Your bar size and your clearance around the bar. Uh, you want chip clearance. Um, you want a big enough bar so that your vibrations and, and harmonics uh, that the, uh, the, the cut itself may generate. Uh, there's, there's ways to do the tooling and your speeds and, and uh, you know now you know that there's it can be as simple as a spring-loaded bar and a star drive against an old man. Uh, it, the primitive uh, way that we did it in the shipyards was very effective. We made the bar to suit. We ordered those bearings. We went through the rummage up and got the springs if, it, it, and even if you need to those individual parts aren't that expensive. Um, broaching your holes in your uh, in your bar for uh, your tool bits that may be up to you whether you want to go that route or if you wanted to go with the uh, the pre-made sleeves with the adjustment screw is a real slick way to do it and I think I like that half inch sleeve right there I think I just priced it in the book there today and they're about 25 bucks um, there's a little bit of work uh, milling out uh, your chip clearance and but the handiness that it had and I built this bar so that I would have it and be able to set up uh, and, and work in, in the machine when I want to uh, the other bar you saw I've already I, I use it in the horizontal mill here I use it in the in the drill press very handy so a lot of times your one-off tooling may pay off in the long run for something else that uh, it just happens to suit as well so I hope I didn't jump around too much and I hope that enlightened you enough to make it worthwhile and thank you very much get her done <laughs>